When anyone is writing anything, you don't know what's going to happen in the years that go by, how episodes will be seen, how themes will be taken up. So it's inevitable really that lists like this will appear. When you're writing about a little moment just to fill in some gaps about a character, you might not know that that then becomes one of the most important threads in the history of said character, so weave lightly my friend, weave lightly. Then of course there are the stories that become infamous all on their own for reasons nothing to do with the storyline. With that in mind, I'm Sean Ferrick for Trek Culture, and here are 10 Star Trek episodes that hit different now. Number 10, Star Trek Generations. Yes, we said episodes, but it's my list, I'll do what I want. Star Trek Generations is a film that keeps getting better with age. As the first Next Generation film, it mostly succeeds in establishing that crew in the movie universe. While Nimoy and Kelly's absence is felt in that opening scene, the entire section aboard the Enterprise B is still a heart-pounding way to start the film. There are several parts of the film that hit a little differently now. The death of Robert and René was devastating at the time, knowing as we did that Picard didn't have any children, nor was he likely to at that stage. However, the introduction of Jack Crusher has given this plot a little more hope that hadn't been there before. So, still a tragedy, but not quite the all-encompassing one originally believed. The crash of the Enterprise D saucer section is one of the most spectacular parts of the film. The flames on the front of the hull, the sheer level of destruction, and the assurance in Picard's log that it cannot be salvaged spelled doom for the noble ship. Then along comes Star Trek Picard and those doors to Hangar 12. The emotions that come to the surface when the recovered saucer section, now with an added star drive section from the USS Syracuse are hard to describe. As an audience, we watched her die. As an audience, we watched her come to life again. Finally, the death of James T. Kirk has been given its own addendum, as the legend's body is stored at Daystrom Station as part of Project Phoenix. Death truly does mean nothing in the Star Trek universe. Number 9. Star Trek Nemesis The ending of this film never really sat right with me. The death of Data, the potential rebirth in the form of B4, and the abrupt return to space dock before a fade to the stars just didn't offer enough time to come to terms with what had happened. Then, although they couldn't have known this during production, the end of the Star Trek franchise as we knew it meant that, for better or worse, Nemesis was not simply a subpar film, but the swan song for one of the greatest sci-fi shows ever made. Star Trek Picard was not just a surprise, it was a total shock for fans when it was announced. This show, coming along more than a decade and a half after Nemesis, had seemed like a pipe dream for so long. However excited as audiences were, few were prepared for that first trailer showing Data returning to screens after his on-screen screen death. The first season of Picard is not without its issues, but the inclusion of a concerted effort to fix Data's death has retroactively made Nemesis far more bearable. Knowing now that it is not the end of the road for the characters helps immeasurably, even offering us a quiet sign-off for Data in A in Arcadio Ego Part 2. Of course, Surrender truly brought the character back to life, so honestly, Nemesis really doesn't sting so much these days. Number 8. Encounter at Farpoint. This is an episode that could feature on this list for a number of reasons. The passing of Defar Forrest Kelly in 1999 makes Admiral McCoy's cameo even more poignant, particularly the mention that if the crew of the Enterprise D treats her right, she'll always bring them home. Cue ugly crying every time that scene plays. Today, it is another scene that now hits a little differently. Star Trek Picard's third season episode, The Bounty, sees Raffi, Worf and Riker confronted with several clues as to the identity of Daystrom Station's advanced AI. There is a crow, there is Professor James Moriarty, and, most tellingly of all, there is a particular tune playing. It's Riker who recognises Pop Goes the Weasel, as it's the very tune that Data was trying to whistle when Riker met him in Farpoint. There's a sense of full circle about the moment, as only Riker could have known the significance of the melody. The inclusion of the footage from Farpoint in the later episode also shows just how much both Riker and Data have changed in the years between, something that is as heartwarming as the whistle Jonathan Frakes knocks off in the hallway. Number 7. Star Trek The Motion Picture While this may not be the most exciting of Star Trek films, there is no doubting the fact that The Motion Picture is easily the most beautiful film of them all, a fact only compounded by the recent 4K remaster. Every inch of the film looks stunning, and Jerry Goldsmith's score elevates an already beautiful production. The actual plot is minimal, and the introduction of the new characters, Ilea and Decker, was probably the high point of the film for the longest time. They were early templates for Riker and Troy, with their love story becoming the true heart of the film. Actor Stephen Collins, who played Decker, became embroiled in legal issues in the
the early 2010s. An audio tape was leaked that featured him admitting to sexual misconduct with minors years previously. After an investigation by the NYPD, Collins admitted to inappropriate behaviour with underage girls in 1973, 1982 and 1994. This makes the film a little harder to watch, knowing that at least one of these incidents had already taken place when he donned a Starfleet uniform. It quite frankly makes a movie that is already a little difficult to sit through, all the more so. Number 6. Endgame Star Trek Voyager's finale is almost perfect, with the exception of that rather sudden ending. The interactions between both Janeways are fantastic, and Alice Krieg's return as the Borg Queen is a welcome term. More welcome, in fact, than a nebula full of cubes. The story sees Admiral Janeway assimilated by the Queen, but not without reason. She brings with her a neurolithic pathogen, just enough to bring chaos to order, something the Queen realises, to her horror, far too late. It certainly does a number on the Collective. With the Queen's control fading, the drones lose focus throughout the galaxy, and the Unicomplex itself begins to explode. Voyager returns home and all seems well. The Borg more or less vanish from the galaxy, with only an occasional run-in here and there. Star Trek Picard's third season reveals that Janeway very nearly did destroy the entire collective, save for a tiny amount of drones and a queen lost at the edge of known space, only truly reawakened when Jack Crusher begins to activate. This very nearly leads to the destruction of Starfleet, and does lead to the assimilation of every officer and cadet under 25 years of age. This is spurred on by the Queen's insanity at losing her millions of voices a direct result of Janeway's actions. While the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, this bold plan almost led to the deaths of millions. Number 5. Unification 1 and 2 Unification is a seminal story in Star Trek, giving us the return of Spock and the introduction of the attempts to reunify Romulus and Vulcan. While the first two episodes show us that, despite the best of intentions, there is still a long way to go, the later episode of Star Trek Discovery offers an optimistic view of the time gone by. Michael Burnham, Spock's adopted sister, is tasked with helping the people of Nivar come to a decision. Nivar is the unified Romulan and Vulcan homeworld, proving that Spock's attempts would eventually come to fruition. Initially, Burnham is unaware of her brother's role in this, but she has shown a recording that hits right in the heart. While she, Book, and the audience look on, reused footage from The Next Generation brings Leonard Nimoy back for this scene. This Spock speaks of his hopes for the future, a future that Burnham is now standing in. It is a scene that never fails to get right under this writer's skin, showing us that sometimes the dream can take its time to come to life, but that person Perseverance is always worth it. A beautiful moment that offers a little more depth to the earlier episodes. Number 4. The Outcast here was an episode that was controversial at the time of release, and as time has progressed, has found itself in discussion time and again, thanks to its themes. The Outcast attempted to deal with a transgender character and the topic of conversion therapy. At the time, activists called the episode out as a well-intentioned failure. They said it didn't go far enough, with Jonathan Frakes agreeing, feeling that a male actor playing Sauron's part would have heightened the message. The mistakes of the episode, however, pale in comparison to how relevant it has become in modern discourse. Today in the world, there is a genocide taking place of transgender people, with numerous bills introduced in the United States seeking to savagely curtail the rights of transgender citizens. One only needs to briefly skim social media to see the cries of transgender people suffering, not least the rising murder rates of transgender people of colour. Gender-affirming care is under direct threat, as is the right of transgender people to exist in public spaces. The message that Sauron delivers, that they are normal, that they are just like everyone else, is more and more prescient. There's no need to fear difference, embrace it and open your mind. Number 3. The Darkness and the light. Major Kira was, from the beginning, framed as a former Bajoran terrorist who had fought to get the Cardassians off her homeworld. She, like many others, was trying to learn to exist in this new order in peacetime, with the Federation offering their help, much like the Cardassians had 60 years before. That was controversial enough in 1992. There were several episodes through Deep Space Nine's run that focused on Kira's terrorist past, but The Darkness and the Light is one that really swung for the fences. The episode sees several members of Kira's former resistance cell murdered by a survivor of one of their attacks. Sillaran Prin takes Kira prisoner, seeking contrition from her. He receives none. She exclaims that in her eyes, every Cardassian on Bajoran soil was as guilty as each other, whether they held a weapon or not. The scene ends with Kira killing the man. The attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon in 2001 have changed the reaction to this episode entirely. The idea of terrorism brought so close to home for so many in the West saw a dramatic change in both media portrayals of terrorism and gave rise to a ways of xenophobia and, in particular, anti-Muslim sentiment. 
moment. As Nana Visitor stated in a recent interview with the Clone Star Pod, it was unlikely an episode like this would have been made in the wake of 9-11. And indeed, the entire character of Kira may not have been anything like the one the audience has got to see in the 90s. Number two, Damage. This third season episode of Star Trek Enterprise stuck in the audience's memories for the darkest of reasons when it aired. Pushed to the extreme by the Zindi's recent attack on the ship, Captain Archer gives the order to steal parts from another ship they encounter in the Expanse, stranding the other vessel in deep space. The ship is crewed by Illyrians, who at the time were new to the franchise. Fast forward 20 years and the Illyrians would return, though in a different form. Star Trek Strange New Worlds' second episode revealed the fact that, as a species, the Illyrians were famed for their genetic engineering. Now, it's never revealed if this has anything to do with a certain ship being stranded in space for two years, but the implications were all over it. Most unfortunately, genetic engineering of any kind precludes a career in Starfleet, with some fairly large asterisks on that one. So the reveal that Una Chin Riley is Illyrian sees her arrested and carted off by Starfleet security at the close of season one. Considering she's in all of the trailers and marketing for season two, we're not overly worried about the outcome of her court-martial, to be fair. Number one, where no one has gone before. The first season of The Next Generation is an oddity. Overall, the tone and pace were evidence that all involved were finding their feet, with the characterization of Picard, Riker, and the rest a little muddled. Where No One Has Gone Before may not be one of the stronger episodes of the season, despite some stunning visuals and the introduction of the Traveller plot, but there is now a scene that stands out above the rest. As the Enterprise finds itself on the edge of the known universe, the crew's thoughts start to become reality. Picard turns a corner and finds himself facing his mother, now an old woman offering him tea. At the time, this was a heartwarming scene, touched with a little sadness as she vanishes when Picard looks away. If we go forward to Star Trek Picard's second season, the audience now knows that Jean-Luc's mother never got to be an old woman. She dies by suicide, an act for which Picard blamed himself for much of his life. While there has been much critique of the way this storyline was handled in the show, it adds a little context and tragedy to this earlier episode. This was not simply a visit from his mother as he remembered her, this was a wish fulfilled that she'd grow to old age loving him and smiling. If anything, the later revelations serve to make this episode heartbreaking. That's everything for our list today, folks. Do you reckon there's anything that changed as time went on that hits a little differently now? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget, you can catch us over on Twitter at Trek Culture. You can catch us on Instagram at Trek Culture YT. You can catch myself at Sean Ferrick on Twitter as well. You're all wonderful. You are all awesome. Make sure that you live long and prosper. Lead with love. Look after your nearest and dearest. And above all else, have yourself a good time until I see you again. Make it so. Cheers.